Hello everybody and welcome back to another ship review episode and today we are looking at this premium tier 6 Japanese battleship, the Mutsu. Nagato's younger sister and she does appear a whole tier lower, uh, tier 6, packing 410mm guns which is a new one uh, although she is not using the same shells as the Nagato. Well how does she perform? Well I will hopefully let you know in this particular video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first go over all the stuff from the port and then show you a bit of battle footage. And then hopefully at the end of the video you have a pretty good sense of what you're going to be getting. There is one thing I should probably remind everybody is that do keep in mind that this ship hasn't been released just yet. So things can still change uh, and we are aware of few changes that are coming. And I'll let you know as we go through uh, the port view of the ship. So first up let's take a look at survivability. Well, the Mutsu has the highest HP pool at 58,400 out of any of the tier 6 battleships. She's actually not all that great when it comes to uh, being able to last quite a while in battle. In fact, she does tend to get citadeled quite a lot for a battleship. Now, she's fine at tier 6. Typically, if you run into a tier 6 battle, you can really go around and bully people. And you're not too, too worried about most of what the enemy team has at tier 6, as long as you're nicely angled. But, if you're running to the higher tier stuff, that's when you start to run into problems. And a lot of this has to sort of do with the armor layout. So, the Mutsu has 25mm of bow armor, you know, 25mm of um, this upper casement armor. Her belt is pretty thick, um, you know, with anything from 229 to 305mm of armor. Um, and so as long as you stay reasonably angled, you can bounce 356mm shells all day long. So tier 6, you're reasonably well protected. Where the issue really begins for the Mutsu is when she gets up tiered uh, into you know, tier 8 battles. I mean, even at tier 7 battles, while those are not really all that great, I mean, at least you can put out the hurt, right? So tier 7, I, I still found it to be okay. But when I ran into sort of tier 8 stuff, so things like running into North Carolinas, uh, Amagis, that's when things didn't really go all that well. Namely because, well, those ships just overmatch your bow and they go right through, and then they go around and smack your citadels. Furthermore, if you look at, let's say, the Mutsu compared to her sister ship, the Nagato, which is, I know, a tier up. But the armor layout's actually very, very similar in terms of design, although there are some very minute differences that do actually make a difference. So if you look at the Nagato, for example, one of the things you might notice is that the Nagato, before you even get to the belt armor, has this torpedo bulge, which when uh, you know is hit by shell fire, is treated as an additional 25 millimeters of armor. So that's the first thing that's different. And second, once you take this layer away, you notice that under the four turrets, the Nagato here has a slope piece of 289 millimeter armor. And this used to be where, like, if you were playing the Nagato, you might have remembered um, that when you were sort of trying to angle, um, you'd get sitted out from the front a lot. Um, although now I find that to happen quite a bit less, and I think that has to do with this armor change that happened. Uh, in fact, if you take away uh, this top layer, you'll notice that this piece, this four piece of uh, armored, uh, thick, well, thick armor actually goes quite a ways back, which means that when you're angled like this in a Nagato and people shoot sort of near the forward turret area, they're not going to see as many citadels. But sort of in contrast, if you look at the Mutsu, well, the Mutsu has none of that thick armor. She's only got this slope 76 millimeter um, piece, which means that when you angle like that and people are able to get through that initial piece of armor, yeah, they're going to get into your citadels, which means Musus really take citadel hits a lot. And if you run into tier 8 things, and let's say you show a little bit too much broadside, uh, you kind of get deleted like this. Not exactly all that much fun. So survivability-wise, the Mutsu, not that great. So Which means that when you play her, you're definitely going to be a little bit further back. And you don't really want to be in front sort of really leading too much of a charge. You'll be a little bit further back, more of a um, fire support battleship in a way, uh, because your guns, they do pack a punch. But I'll get to that in a second. Torpedo damage reduction, eh, not that good. Um, even with damage control, 
module one 24 percent is pretty much on par with like the german battleships and they're pretty notorious for being pretty bad when it comes to torpedo protection and the mutsu suffers from not really being able to get that much damage reduction although although it is helped by the fact that the mutsu is reasonably fast and pretty agile all right so the big selling point what's the big selling point for the mutsu if it's not survivability what is it well it's the 410 millimeter guns that's the mutsu selling point these guns are really nice for tier 6 because well you just get a punch through everybody else's bow armor uh, without any real difficulty because they pretty much overmatch everything now the first two things that are going to be changed about the Mutsu is that one the reload time is going down so you're going to actually be able to fire faster than what is currently listed in the preview and also your guns are going to traverse a bit faster so that's going to help the Mutsu uh, you're not going to have to worry too too much about um, just having this really slow rate of fire it's going to be up to sort of normal battleship specs I believe 30 seconds and the guns are going to traverse a little bit faster which should mean that uh, when you're turning your guns are going to be able to stay on target a bit easier. In terms of max dispersion, the Mutsu's max dispersion number is actually pretty much identical to the Nagato. If you take a look at them, Nagato at 20.5 is 215 meters with the uh, module. The Mutsu at 20.4 kilometers is 214 meters. So pretty much in terms of max dispersion, identical. The difference comes in the Nagato has better sigma values, from what I know. Uh, it's 2.0 sigma on the Nagato, only 1.8 on the Mutsu. So the shells are going to have a little bit more wildness to them compared to the Nagato. Still, if you aim well, you're going to find that the Mutsu is relatively consistent. Uh, with hitting her shells, although she can have those wild salvos, but the Nagato can have them too. So, in terms of all the sort of um, you know, how the guns handle, it's gonna be okay. Where there's the big difference, I guess, between the Mutsu and the Nagato is that the Mutsu has the 410 millimeter um, Type 88 armor-piercing shells compared to the Nagato's Type 91s. So these are the older armor-piercing shells. Now they still do great damage, 12,400, which means that if you do pen, you're still going to hurt stuff. If you get citadels, you're still going to hurt things. However, because of the way um, the shells are, they're the older shells, their crop values are not very good, and everything. If you take a look at this penetration curve, you'll see that the Mutsu is actually not doing that good, you know, even compared to other tier 6 battleships. So why am I going around saying that uh, the Kirk guns are going to perform quite decently? And a lot of this has to do with the fact that they're 410 millimeter guns and they're still able to overmatch a bunch of stuff. And as long as you're able to overmatch, you're going to be able to do pretty reliable amounts of damage. So in when you run into basically tier 6, tier 7 stuff, the Mutsu's guns are going to perform quite well. Uh, and the low penetration numbers, yeah, they're a bit low, but again, if you're playing within that range where the Mutsu is comfortable, let's say between 12 to about 15 kilometers, your guns are still going to perform fine penetration wise. So that's really the big selling point for me. And of course, yes, the high alpha damage as well. Even if you just get penetrating hits, you're going to get a good amount of damage. Uh, I think if I was like up against the Bismarck, land a decent salvo looking, you know, even without Citadels looking at like 16,000 damage. So quite good there. Range, of course, is also really good for the main guns, 20.4 kilometers, and that, combined with a scout plane, means that you can kind of take pot shots at things from quite a distance away. And again, with the Mutsu's pretty good dispersion, you should be able to hit things. Now, the Mutsu has secondary guns. Um, there are a lot of them, but they're relatively short range, only 4.2 kilometers. And of course, being tier 6, you don't really gain benefits from like manual secondary, so secondary build's not going to be really a thing. With the Mutsu, I would recommend you focus on those main guns and making them that much better. Now, the Mutsu is somewhat unique amongst Japanese battleships right now um, for having some last-ditch torpedoes. Uh, and, well, let's talk about the torpedoes a little bit. They are single launchers. You have two per side. Yeah, so that's not a lot of torpedoes. Two per side. They're 533 millimeter torpedoes. They reload pretty quickly, 21 seconds. Damage isn't all that great, and only 10,833 max. Torpedo range is 7 kilometers, which is quite decent, but speed is kind of low at 57 knots. They are kind of stealthy torpedoes, 
uh, with a detectability range of only 1.2 kilometers. Now, these torpedoes are positioned around a midships area. Um, they do have some torpedo firing arc, so that's kind of nice. Although, what you'll find with these torpedoes is they're a little bit more of a they're a little bit more of a like let's say a surprise weapon. Um, you get up close. You're not really wanting to get into that fight, but let's say circumstances made it so you couldn't help it. You got up close to something else, and let's say you've shot your main guns. They've shot their main guns, and you're, everybody's sort of waiting for a reload. You could kind of go for these torpedoes. They're just they're kind of iffy to use. You don't really want to use them normally because think about it. Like let's say you're angled towards an enemy battleship like this. In order to get your torpedoes off, you kind of have to go more broadside. And that's just inviting people to delete you. Um, I've only managed to get them off on occasion. And that's really more, in a way, luck that the enemy didn't really uh, delete me outright. Um, so you'll see that in the gameplay episode, um, or the gameplay portion. So anyways, th sometimes usable, not all the time. Uh, that's the thing for the torpedoes. Again could be a pretty good surprise weapon, right? Okay. Um, then we look at her, uh, the Mutsu's AA defense, um, to which I ask, uh, AA defense? What AA defense? <laughs> you don't really have much in terms of AA defense. You have these large dual caliber 127 millimeter guns. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all of, you got these four dual uh, 127s and that's pretty much your AA damage. Um, because these are the only ones that can reach out a bit range-wise, five kilometer range. Once you get past these things, you've got a couple of these 40 millimeter machine guns here, but you've only got like two of these, and they don't have a lot of range. And then once you get past that, you've got these really, really pathetic 7.7 millimeter machine guns, and they have basically no range, and against planes are totally ineffective. So Mutsu, when it comes to uh, being capable against airplanes, not happening. Um, CV decides they want you, you're kind of screwed. You're really going to need some help, um, which, yeah, is from cruisers and things like that. But, but, got to point out something. Now, unlike other battleships, with the Mutsu, if you slap on like a speed flag, you can at least somewhat keep up with your cruisers, which might be a bit of a help. Because, in terms of speed, the Mutsu is actually relatively fast. 26.5 knots. So that's a good speed for 2.6 battleships. And if you throw on a flag, I think you're going to get something like 27 point something. Pretty decent speed for a battleship. And that's going to allow you to keep somewhat close to those cruisers. Although you're still not going to get ahead of them, right? You can kind of be a little bit behind them, lending them that support sniper fire. Turning radius, 770 meters. Uh, it's not amazing. I mean, the Fuso's at 740. Um, it's, well, basically identical to the Nagato. It's not great agility-wise, but again, pretty decent speed combined with a soon-to-get even better rudder shift time um, will mean that the Mutsu is somewhat going to be able to dodge torpedoes, um, which means that that sort of poor torpedo um, protection can be somewhat mitigated uh, if you're an alert enough captain. Concealment-wise, Mutsu is pretty easily spotted. 16.4 kilometer detectability range. Um, I'm running only a 13-point captain here, so I didn't get Concealment Expert first. Um, so yeah, you are going to get spotted and you know, quite a, from, from quite a distance away, and probably people are going to shoot at you. So do keep that in mind. Again, kind of the reason why you're more comfortable a little bit further away, giving yourself some time to actively try to dodge shells instead of uh, trying to not get spotted and not get shot at. All right. In terms of modules, what you want to do for your Mutsu is you want to go with Main, uh, main Armaments Mod 1, then you want to go with Aiming Systems Mod 1, Damacon 1, and then Steering Gears Mod 2. One other thing to point out about the Mutsu is that if you're going to go and spec up your captain, here's how I would recommend you get the first sort of 10 points, right? So start off with either um, Priority Target or Preventative Maintenance. Um, although I actually prefer Preventative Maintenance on the Mutsu, the ship's Especially the main guns, you have a tendency of getting knocked out. So not a bad choice there. Um, you Again, 
priority target could work, right? Just if depends on if you want intel, if you want your guns and stuff to uh, not get knocked out as frequently. Once you get past the first row skills on the second row, I would say you get expert marksman for now. Although if the turret reverse buff goes through, um, you might want to consider maybe adrenaline rush first, right? She does have a tendency of losing HP, sometimes quite quickly too, so that might help. Now uh, for me for now, I will get expert marksman. Once you get past that, onto the third row. Third row, you've got a couple of choices, namely three skills. You can either get basics of survivability, which you know could help with those fires that you do tend to catch quite a bit. Um, you could opt for superintendent, giving you the extra uh, heal charge, which could be quite useful. She does take damage quite a lot. Or you could get something like Vigilance. Um, she doesn't have the torpedo protection, so spotting torpedoes a little bit earlier and being able to take some kind of action to prevent that damage could be quite helpful. So your pick there, um, my personal selection in this particular case, namely just of sort of how much I've taken damage and sometimes really missed that repair kit, um, the extra repair charge, sorry, um, I'll get Superintendent. Although it is perfectly viable to get basics of survivability or vigilance, just depends on your style of play and what you run into in battle. And then once you get onto the fourth row, I would say fire prevention first. The Mutsu just, I don't know, she just catches fire all the time. And I think having fire prevention will help. Um, it'll allow you to, um, let's say, not take as much fire damage. Um, you know, you do have a huge superstructure area, and people do shoot at that quite a bit. Especially because, again, remember, your ship's also pretty easy to spot, right? Which kind of hints that once you get fire prevention, you might want to consider Concealment Expert, maybe with the next four points. Although you could always opt for other skills, right? With the next four points, you could always opt for a high alert and adrenaline rush combo. That could be it, or maybe additional survivability, you know, high alert, jack of all trades. Uh, so you might want to consider something like that. Um, so really, you know, once you get past the first 10 skills, maybe the first 14, if you choose to get a four-point skill, the rest of it you really tailor to your particular style of play. Anyways, folks, that does it for the port view. Let's take a look at how she performs in battle. All right, so remember what I said earlier. The ideal battles for the Mutsu, the ones where you really get to be the big bully, right, is the tier six battles. I mean, tier 6 is where you're able to protect yourself from the majority of enemy battleships with the exception of two battleships, the Bayern and the um, uh, Warspite. But when you're running into anything that's armed with 356mm guns, quite well protected. Which means that you can be a little bit more get up close and personal <laughs> with enemy battleships. Um, and you can fight them. So, tier 6, you're the big bully. Again, you run into much bigger problems when you get up-tiered into Tier 8. And again, do keep in mind that with the current game's matchmaking, you do have a tendency of seeing those Tier 8 battles a little bit more. Although, to adjust for going from, let's say, a Tier 6 battle to a Tier 8 battle is going from being quite aggressive when you're, let's say, in a Tier 6 battle to being a little bit more passive. Um, so you can go from, let's say, a frontline battleship in a tier 6 battle to more of a second line battleship if you get into a tier 8 battle. So as a player, you have to make that adjustment, right? You can't be as aggressive in a tier 8 battle as you are in a tier 6 battle. It just doesn't work. All right, so here is where in this low tier battle, I do weird things, which is, hey, I'm just going to see how my torpedoes function, All right? In, in most normal cases, you don't go broadside to any battleship, just... Not a good idea, but I'm like, oh, I want to see if I can get torpedoes up. So there was a Koenig, again, you know, reasonably safe against Koenigs. There you go. You can shoot at battleships like the Koenig in that sort of more, you know, bow on position and your guns will perform reasonably well. Do note that I am getting set on fire and I'm, I'm okay with it, right? Only one fire, not the end of the world. Ow, that crash bay. Ow. That does actually hurt. But, you know, hey, at least got torpedoes off. I, I got to say I used my torpedoes against another battleship and did actually predict that turn for the Koenig as well. So, yay, two hits with those torpedoes, as you can tell. <laughs> two hits. Uh, yeah. Didn't get all that much damage-wise, though. Uh, only about 10,000. So, all right, back into using the guns. See, the Mutsu's 
torpedoes aren't really game-winning kind of torpedoes. I mean, they can be nice as a surprise weapon. I have I have caught the occasional like cruiser off guard with them, and especially because you know 7k range is a bit deceptive, right? For sort of surprise torpedoes, sometimes you can catch people a little bit further away, and they're like, huh? You know, they hit something, and they're like, whoa, where did that come from, right? That's the Mutsu's torpedoes. You know, be smart. Don't always go like, I have torpedoes, I'm going to use them. They're not German battleships. Yeah, not, not a German battleship. Don't play it as such. All right. Shooting at an Arizona at range. And you'll start to notice that once you get into that, like, sort of 16-kilometer-ish range, like, you can still hit stuff, but it's not as comfortable. Okay, enemy CV coming in to attack me. Managed to shoot down the two of the planes. Hooray. Um... And of course, oh, make that three. And really only able to survive that torpedo run because enemy CV was a tier five using auto drop, which means that had that been more of a manual drop, would have taken a lot more damage there. So, yeah. That's things you got to deal with as a Mutsu player, right? Okay, so enemy Graf Spey trying to get nicely angled. Just because Graf Spade does still have guns that can punish you if you're broadside. Now I'm going to try to get my guns around here. Alright. You'll notice that in this entire battle, that slow rate of fire, you know, at least in this preview version, does kind of hurt the performance of the ship. She is, I think, going to be quite a bit more deadly once she actually has a 30 second reload. That becomes even better when you're, let's say, at half HP with the Adrenaline Rush skill. So, you know, again, the current battle performance of the ship that I'm showing you is not fully reflective of what she's going to be like when she gets all of her final changes. I, I, I actually expect her to get, become quite a bit better and I expect her to become quite a bit stronger. In terms of players, I would say the Mutsu is going to be quite a polarizing ship. Kind of like the way the Nagato is. Like I love the Nagato. But I've met people who absolutely hate that ship. They feel like her guns don't behave. And again, much like the Nagato, and I'll explain some of the reasons why, um, if your aim isn't good, the Nagato and the Mutsu both punish you. It's like, but if your aim is on point, you will have quite good results with both battleships. Okay, Graf Spey. All right. Again, I'm going to kind of ignore any real attempts from the Grash Bay to maybe do any kind of angling. Although, in this case, I'm just going to wait for the shot. There we go. Fire a salvo. Yeah, it's not bad. Dispersion's not bad there. And angling really just doesn't matter. You're going to get through that armor uh, in most cases. Grash Bay doesn't really want to stick around, so it's probably going to get behind that island again. So me, expecting that he's going to do that, just going to turn around get my guns uh, back around. And of course, you know, had the Graf Spade turned, decided to come down the channel, still had those torpedoes, right? Like, that's the thing about the uh, Mutsu, like, you, ha you still have torpedoes, which means that you can surprise people with them, right? They, they're like, oh, there's no torpedoes expected, and then suddenly something comes out. They're also slow, which can, at times, allow these torpedoes to really sneak up on people. Uh, think about the way that sometimes you face, let's say, a Sims with like the long range set. Those torpedoes suck damage wise, but you sometimes do get surprised by them. It's like you just don't expect anything to come out in any direction, then suddenly, much, much later, oh, torpedoes, right? It's kind of the same effect sometimes with the uh, Mutsu's torpedoes. Okay. Unfortunately, this early part of the battle, I didn't really get much done. <laughs> Just, yeah, didn't get much done. Uh, trying to turn around to engage that Grouch Bay caused me to waste quite a bit of time just doing a couple circles. Not the best play there, um, but it will get better, I promise. <laughs> All right, so looking at the map, I noticed that the enemy has quite a few battleships to the north. Using the Musu's pretty reasonable speed, I'm going to get over there and start engaging. I think this is where I get a reasonable amount of damage out. All right, so first things first, Arizona coming out, little bit of a broadside there. You really have to judge it based on what you're seeing on the mini map, by the way. Okay, pretty nice salvo in there. Yeah, 8,000 damage, three penetrations. Um, not the best kind of salvos. I've actually had better um, against, I believe, like you know, tier eight Bismarcks. I've had 
15, 16K salvos. So, you know, the, the guns definitely do perform. Slow reload does suck in this kind of scenario, right? When your reload is still a bit of in the slow phase. Although, again, with that buff that's coming, I think it'll be a lot better, especially in these more up close fights, right? Here, I'm still dealing with like a 32 second reload. Even though that's with the adrenaline rush skill going. There we go. That was a good hit. Almost 14,000. And, oh, come on. <laughs> 275. Ah, oh, come on. Somebody kill that Arizona, please. Oh, come on. <laughs> pew. Somebody pew it. There we go, There's the, there we go, there we go, thank you New Mexico. Alright, so turning my guns on to the Bayern, Bayern's in trouble because the Bayern's got sort of ships in every which direction, decide where you want to aim that bow, of course choosing to aim at something else means I will pew pew you with amazing 410 mil guns and there's 15k damage on 4 pens and 1 over pen against the Bayern, so yeah, I just go, alright. That Byron, I can leave. They'll be taken care of by all these other battleships. Turn around. Attention goes uh, to that Königsberg. Over there. 14.4-ish kilometers away from me. Again, this is sort of where, as the Mutsu, you have to be comfortable. Engaging targets at, like, sort of 15k. You have to be quite comfortable. You don't have to be amazing at, like, the super long-range stuff, but you have to be very comfortable shooting at this range and landing those hits. Konigsberg, there you go. Double Citadel, 16k damage, adios. Okay, fantastic. Let's see on the minimap. I see Graf Bay coming around. All right, that Byron's going to be taken care of, so guns onto the Graf Bay. Yes, I'm also a damage farming scrub, so forgive me for hunting the things with a little bit more HP, Kappa. Okay, <laughs> all right, so um, Graf Bay comes back out, turn around, get my guns aimed, fire... Eh, not the best salvo, not the worst salvo, just kind of one of those mess salvos. Um, dispersion, like I said, can at times be a little bit, just a little bit, on the crazy side. Although she does definitely have salvos that behave quite nicely. You do sometimes also notice that you sometimes get those nice tight shell groupings as well. Alright, so, waiting for the reload, waiting for that reload. Okay, Graf Space giving me a little bit more side to shoot at. There we go. See, this level is much, much prettier. Shells are a lot tighter together. And again, if your aim is good, don't 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 worry about the results <laughs> so much sometimes. You sometimes just get very crappy results where your shells overpen and you're just like, oh, come on. Right? That was one of them. Uh, in in a lot of cases though, you know, as if your if your dispersion behaves and you know, you just happen to hit in good places, you are going to see pretty solid results. All right, so waiting for that reload again. Third time's the charm, folks. Third time's always going to be the charm. There we go. Graf Bay this time. Turns out, again, a pretty solid salvo dispersion-wise, and there's my Citadel for 17k damage. But apparently in this battle, I just have crap luck with actually finishing anything. Graf Bay sits at like just a couple hundred, maybe just over a thousand HP. And now somebody else is going to finish him. Damn it. <laughs> Could have had a crack in this game, damn it. Um, Alright, no point waiting for... Yeah, so... No, no point waiting for that reload. Look on the map. One destroyer at the 10 line. One carrier over at the 2 line. Again, Mutsu's good speed is going to allow me to go ahead and catch that carrier. And I'm going to finish him off and basically end up with a pretty solid game. Pretty solid uh, chunk of um, damage as well. So going back to what I was talking about earlier, right? You run into tier six battles. Mutsu is going to be this very good ship. She's going to be a bit of a bully. You can really sort of engage ships without much concern about things. Once you get to, you know, North Carolinas and uh, Amagis, that's where you've got to be a lot more careful, right? And that's where that playstyle shift has to happen. Not the easiest shift to make though. Because once you get sort of used to playing in a certain uh, mentality, you start to adjust it uh, for every scenario, right? Sometimes you just sort of repeat actions you've done before. And you have to be very wary and cautious of that in the Mutsu, right? If you are um, somebody who is conscious of it and you adapt your playstyle and you are able to handle the guns, I think the Mutsu is going to perform very, very well for you. If, on the other hand, you're somebody who, let's say, gets stuck into one style of play, let's say you're overly aggressive all the time, um, then you're going to get punished. The Mutsu is very unforgiving 
um, if you happen to run into higher tier battles and get too far ahead of your team. Kind of what I kind of actually what happened in that earlier clip where I just got instant nuked by the North Carolina. Overextended a little bit, got caught out, didn't fully angle against uh, the NC, and of course he popped up. I was like, oh, there's the North Carolina. Rip. <laughs> just get wrecked. All right, and finally, the one last thing about the Mutsu, you do get a scout plane. Uh, well, the floaty scout plane instead of the catapult fighter. Yeah, they're, they're both float planes, um, but anyways. This one gives you that extra bit of range, which means that you are able to engage stuff from ridiculous distances away at tier 6. Um, I'm shooting at a Zuiho that's like 23 kilometers away from me. Uh, and you are able to get off a couple of salvos there. Um, the Zuiho is... Yeah, this Weho just became like food for me. Oh well, a little bit more damage farm could never hurt, right? <laughs> we need to pad those stats some more. All right, anyways, um, so concluding thoughts about the Mutsu. Um, I think she's going to be in the right hands, a very, very scary battleship to run into. And with 410 millimeter guns, even if you run into tier 8 battles, those ships still have to respect your guns. You're still going to be able to hurt them. Like, yes, I know. Penetration isn't amazing, but you're still going to be able to pen. It's like they're still battleship guns. They have pretty decent pen still, even though not the best. You know, they're still going to be able to put, well, put out that kind of damage, especially if people give you a broadside, right? Um, her guns, you know, if you can handle them, if you can make them behave, they'll, they'll work for you. If you are somebody who can't get them to behave, you're going to hate the ship, right? Also, survivability is definitely an issue with the Mutsu. So if you are you know, somebody who can't really uh, deal with just getting randomly citadeled here and there, and that causes you to rage, then Mutsu is probably not going to be your ship. However, if you can sort of adapt your playstyle to different tiers, uh, you know, bully the lower tiers, and then play a little bit more conservatively once you get to higher tiers, she should perform for you quite well. One final thing of note is that do keep in mind the Mutsu is reasonably fast, so you know try to position yourself correctly with that speed, and you know again she's a little bit more of that sort of support kind of battleship once you get uh, to the higher tiers. So use that speed to um, again not be too far away from the sort of the ships leading the charge, but you also don't want to be in a situation where you're so far up in the front where you're just going to get focused and die quickly. Anyways, folks, um, that pretty much does it for this review. Uh, if you have any questions about the Mutsu, do try to leave those in the comment section below. I will try to get to those comments, although do keep in mind that I am having um, family medical emergencies uh, these days, so I'm not always around. I'll try to answer some of these questions uh, to the best of my ability, but you know, if I don't get to your question, I do apologize. For those of you who kept up with me recently during uh, the recent sale and chat episode, um, just to update you all a little bit, things are actually not so good. She was kind of not really doing that much better, so we insisted on an MRI scan, and of course when they did that, they found hydrocephalus, um, which is a buildup of fluid in her brain. So that necessitated a transfer to a different mm -hmm. hospital where she could see a neurosurgeon. Um, they did a whole bunch of tests on her, and they performed the first um, operation yesterday. They put a, they drilled a hole and put a drain, um, I guess it's like a drain tube. So they're starting to drain some of the uh, additional, the extra CSF in her brain that's built, causing that pressure buildup. Um, then they're going to do a second surgery. We're going to find out when they're going to do that. Although from what I found out yesterday, during the tests of her CSF, they also found uh, something growing in there bacteria-wise, uh, something called gram-positive cosi in pairs. So they are giving her antibiotics. They're going to make sure that all the bacteria is gone first before they decide to move on to the second operation to create a bypass. So things are not looking too good right now, um, but hopefully now that they know what's going on, uh, they're going to be able to fix it and there's going to be a recovery happening. So, you know, I'm just going to sort of update you guys on that. I'm going to render this video, get it uploaded, and I'm going to take off back to the hospital. Um, again, leave your questions in the comment section, and I'll do my best to try to answer them, but it'll probably happen a little bit later on, maybe in a few days. Anyways, folks, take care. Uh, have yourselves a good one. Hopefully you have a good idea what the Mutsu is like now, uh, and I'm looking forward to talking to all of you again pretty soon.